Hey everybody, Tech Guy Charlie here. Welcome to the channel. In this video, I am going to show you how to clone an NVMe drive onto another NVMe drive. And this will come in very handy if you want to upgrade to a larger NVMe drive but you don't want to go through the hassle of backing up all your files and going through the cumbersome process of reinstalling all your apps and windows. And if you find this video to be helpful, make sure that you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. So with that out of the way, let's get started. Now for this, you only need two things. So first off, you will need a new NVMe drive. Kinda obvious, right? So to upgrade my laptop, I've bought this WD Black SN750 SE. This is a fairly decent mid-range NVMe SSD. I've picked the one terabyte version because this was the most economical when it comes to price per gigabyte. Not sponsored by WD, I've bought this with my own money. The next thing you will need is a USB NVMe SSD enclosure. So this is what we will use to clone the existing drive onto the new one. And this enclosure is very useful because once we are done with the cloning process, you can actually repurpose the NVMe SSD that will come out of your laptop as a high speed USB flash drive using this enclosure. I will show you how to do that later in the video. And it's got everything we will need from screws to USB cables to even a screwdriver. Awesome, right? I will put a purchase link to this in the video's description. By the way, if your laptop or desktop PC has two or more M.2 slots, you don't need this enclosure because then you can just straight away plug the new NVMe SSD into your motherboard and start the cloning process. But I am assuming that your laptop or desktop does not have a second M.2 NVMe slot because majority of them don't. So in this case, you will need to get yourself this enclosure. Okay, start by installing the new SSD in the USB M.2 enclosure. It's pretty easy to install the SSD, barely takes about 5 minutes to get the enclosure ready. I just referred to the user manual that came with this thing. Once you are done, connect the enclosure to your laptop using the USB cables. Now I am using a USB Type-C to Type-C cable because my notebook has a USB Type-C port. But if your PC does not have a USB Type-C port, then use the other Type-C to Type-A cable. Now before we start the cloning process, the first thing that we will need to do is initialize the new SSD. So to initialize the new SSD, we will need to go to Disk Management. So right click on the Start button and select Disk Management. You'll automatically get the Initialize Disk Prompt. So make sure GPT is selected and then click on OK and that's pretty much all you need to do. So that's our new SSD. Okay so now comes the main cloning process and the application that I'm gonna use is Macrium Reflect. This is an awesome utility that you can use to take backups and clone your hard drives. And the best part is Macrium Reflect is free and you can download this from their website. I'll put this link in the video's description. So all you gotta do is go to their website, scroll down and download Reflect 7 free. This is the version that I have on my laptop and it works great. Okay, so once you have Macrium Reflect on your PC, just run the application. And you will be greeted by this screen. So let's maximize this for a better view. So on this side of the screen, it shows you all of the hard drives that are connected to your PC. So right away, I can already tell you this is our internal NVMe SSD. That's because it contains the C Windows partition. So this is what we want to clone to the external NVMe SSD, which later on will become our main internal SSD. The first one is the secondary SATA hard drive that I've installed in this laptop. So we're gonna ignore that. And lastly, our external NVMe SSD, which is inside this enclosure is showing up over here. As you can see, it is completely empty. So to start the cloning process, select the disk that you want to clone. In our case, we want to clone this disk. So click over here and then select clone disk disk. Make sure everything is selected because we want to clone the drive as it is onto the new one. If you deselect a partition, then the new drive will not boot. Now click on select a disk to clone to and select the external SSD which is this one. I will also click on delete existing partitions so to avoid any problems. And that's it. Click on next, next and then finish and also click on OK. And now the cloning process has started. So
So we're about halfway done and boy these NVMe enclosures do get quite hot. So it's running at about 40 degrees Celsius. Let me turn this thing over and check the temperature of the heatsink. Okay, so it looks like the drive is running at about 44 degrees Celsius and that is pretty normal kind of temperatures for an NVMe SSD. We're almost done, 95% through and looks like the SSD temperature is at about 51 degrees Celsius. Again, completely normal temperatures. I've seen these NVMe drives run as hot as 63 degrees Celsius on my main rig. So 50 degrees is nothing to worry about, but yeah, you won't be able to touch it while it is actually operating. So yeah, that's pretty hot. It's almost done though, 99% through. And that's it, the cloning process has completed successfully. We can now close Macrium Reflect. So now we're gonna shut the laptop down and swap over the SSDs. All right, just took the rear cover off my laptop and here we are. Fun fact, I actually used the same screwdriver that came with the enclosure to take out all the screws off my laptop. Okay, so our internal NVMe drive is underneath this metal heatsink. So I will unscrew this little screw to take out the internal NVMe drive. So there you go, that's the internal M.2 NVMe SSD of this laptop. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna install the new SSD that I've just taken out of the enclosure. So it just plugs in like this. And now this metal heatsink with the thermal pad goes onto the SSD. And now we can go ahead and reinstall the screw. And that is it. Our new cloned SSD is now installed in our laptop. So now all we gotta do is reassemble the laptop and turn it back on and we should boot right into Windows. And like I said, I'm using the screwdriver to open and close my laptop that actually came with the enclosure. All right, moment of truth. Let's see if it boots into Windows. Hey, so check this out. It is starting up and here is the original NVMe that we took out of the laptop. So it is starting up, taking a little while and boom, we are on Windows desktop. So that shows you the cloning process was successful. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is click on this PC. Now the first thing you will notice is that this hard drive looks exactly like this one. So it is not showing up as a one terabyte SSD. That's because we need to add the unallocated space onto the C drive. Let me show you how to do that. So what we will do is right click on the start button and then go to disk management. And inside disk management, you can see there is our unallocated space. So just right click on the Windows C partition and select extend volume. Click on next, next and finish. And now our Windows partition will show up as a one terabyte drive. So there you go, capacity 931 gigabytes. Now let me show you how to repurpose the original SSD as a USB flash drive. You know what, I just realized something. This screw actually goes in at the top of the SSD like this. And this circular thing screws in at the bottom. If you attach this thing at the top, then the thermal pads won't make contact with the heatsink. The weird thing is the manual actually shows the mounting stud at the top of the SSD and the screw at the bottom. So if you end up mounting the SSD as the manual tells you to, then the thermal pads won't make contact with the heatsink. All right, so here we go. Let's plug the enclosure in. And now this thing has the SSD that used to be inside the laptop. As you have seen, I've just swapped it over. So here we go. So that is the external NVMe SSD. It's showing up as the E drive. So this used to be the C drive when this SSD was inside our laptop. So here's the thing. We're not gonna use any of the contents that are on the external NVMe SSD because we have already cloned this drive onto the new one which is now inside our laptop. Now you can always right click and select format, but I don't really recommend this method because there are hidden partitions on this NVMe SSD. Why? Because this contains a fully functional Windows installation. And I can actually show you by right clicking on the start menu and going to disk management. So inside disk management, you can see disk 2 is our external NVMe SSD 
476 gigabytes and as you can see there is a system partition on it and if you right click this there is no option to delete this because it is locked the only thing that you will be able to delete is the e partition right click and delete volume but i don't recommend this because this will still leave the system partition on the external ssd and that system partition may cause conflicts in the future so i would recommend that you open up command prompt and use the disk part utility because that's way more advanced so let me show you what you should do so open up the start menu and type in cmd and run command prompt as administrator type disk part that is d-i-s-k-p-a-r-t and press enter so disk part is slightly more advanced and it will clear out all the system partitions on the external ssd so once you have disk part running through the command prompt type list disk and press enter and this will show you all of the disks that are connected to your pc and you guys already know disk 2 is our external nvme ssd if you are not sure right click on the start menu and go to disk management and identify which is the external ssd so disk 2 is the 500 gigabyte external ssd so now i will type in cell sel disk 2 and press enter so now the external ssd is selected now type in clean and press enter and that will clear out everything that is on the external ssd including the locked system partitions and it's telling us succeeded in cleaning the disk so now we can go ahead and exit the disk partition utility now after performing this little procedure you will notice that the drive does not show up in the windows explorer that's because everything from the external ssd has been wiped off including all of the partitions so right click on the start menu and go to disk management and you will automatically get the initialize disk prompt select gpt and click on ok and scroll down and there is our external nvme ssd which is inside the enclosure so again same procedure right click new simple volume next 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 and finish and that is pretty much all there is to it and now the external nvme ssd shows up in this pc and this being an nvme is fast i mean calling it fast is an understatement you know what let me show you the transfer speeds so what i'm going to do is copy over a bunch of video files onto the external nvme ssd and you'll see how fast it is so these are about 18 gigabyte worth of files i'm just gonna drag and drop these onto the external nvme ssd and take a look at those transfer speeds that's over 300 megabytes per second that is fast that is actually more than enough speed to edit 4k videos directly off the external nvme so that is over 300 megabytes worth of sustained write speed on the external ssd the read speed from the external nvme is also good so to demonstrate i will just drag and drop these video files onto the desktop so here we go so about 370 megabytes of read speed from the external nvme ssd and also keep in mind if you want these kind of speeds your internal hard drive should also be an ssd if you've got a mechanical internal hard drive you will never achieve these kind of speeds with an external ssd so that's it that barely took about 15 seconds to transfer over 10 gigabyte worth of files so that shows you how fast these ssds really are and finally this method does not require reactivation of windows or microsoft office so if we go to settings and then go to activation it says windows is active and also if i launch ms office and go to accounts here it also says product activated so reactivation of windows and office isn't required because the hardware is exactly the same as it was before so if you decide to clone your ssd using this method you won't have to worry about windows or office activation also a very important thing whenever you want to disconnect a removable drive such as this one always use the safely remove hardware button in the taskbar right click and eject this makes sure that there is no data corruption on the drive anyways guys that's how you clone an ssd and repurpose the oem ssd using an external nvme enclosure
So thank you for watching. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, make sure to press the like button. And do make sure to subscribe to the channel. I've got plenty of PC tutorials on the channel. Alright, so I will see you guys in another video. Thank you for watching.